Hey guys, how's it going? It's Murder here with a patch note overview. Uh, we shifted away from the necessarily weekly updates. Uh, I think the, the idea is that they'll still be trying to do weekly updates when, when possible, but uh, occasionally they you know, might have to skip a week uh, to make sure that they got everything right, got all the bugs squashed, and so on and so forth. But nonetheless, I'll be keeping up with the videos uh, all the same. So um, hopefully the background noise isn't too intense here. I'm actually just going to toss it down one notch. Um, although I'm pretty sure I'm drowning it out anyway. So uh, what I didn't do is a patch note overview for the April 2nd patch because, um, well, a few different reasons. Anyway, won't get into it. Um, that, that was a really small patch where they initially uh, you know, implemented the 64-bit client and then uh, rolled it back and now re-implemented it today. Just going to run through this really quick um, to do it. It's, it's justice, essentially. Uh, there were new uh, non-player studio camos available uh, immediately in the depot, um, as well as a ton of player studio items, um, helmets, decals, camos, and so on and so forth, uh, that were added with coming soon, some of which have already released, so uh, make sure you do check those out if you haven't already. Um, they made some minor adjustments to missions uh, in terms of voiceover and uh, defense missions um, using you know, uh, better, better conditions um, instead of enemy population. Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, basically fix, fixing bugs and, and you know unintended functionality uh, of them, uh, as well as adjusting the update delay when crossing regions. Um, as far as that goes, it, like I said, it was a really small patch. Um, Reaver art optimization, uh, which resulted in some wacky Reaver things that have since been fixed. <laughs> so anyway, uh, some updates to Reaver textures, colors, and camo patterns. Um, mouse clicks now closing the, uh, the the death screen, which is great. I like that. Um, fix some issues with reinforcements and some action spawns. Uh, more reaver stuff. Um, blah 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 blah. Some some crash fixes. Uh, and I I mean I think that's kind of the gist of it. But like I said, I just wanted to to make sure that this was included uh, in the notes. However. We've got much lengthier notes for April 16th today, so this is really kind of the meat of it. Um, I'll, uh, I'll hop into game and, and display a few things when I can, uh, but the rest of it will just actually kind of go through. So the 64-bit client is in fact back, and there should be a significant reduction in crashes. There are still some. Uh, you can check out this major issues thread. It's, uh, it's one that was updated a few weeks back, but it's you know kind of ongoing, essentially. Uh, still some that need to be fixed, uh, but you know, it, it's largely improved over the uh, you know initial implementation of it. All known server crashes as well fixed. That's a pretty broad statement. I like it. Um, the biggest thing I'd say of the patch that I'm excited about, and probably most people are, are the new carbines. Uh, Light Assault's probably my favorite class. May not always be my most played class, but definitely my favorite and and uh, the most fun. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to the Light Assault update and so on and so forth um, in the future. But anyway, we got some new toys, uh, one new carbine for each Empire, the Bandit for the NC, the Cougar for the TR, and the Zenith for the VS. Uh, I'll go through them uh, real quickly in, uh, in VR. They tend to be high mobility, close quarters carbines uh, for the most part. The TR carbine is a heavy hitting 167 damage carbine as, as opposed to its, its other counterparts. Um, the, the NC and the... Um, the VS at least uh, give you your, your faster strafe speed um, while aiming down the sights. I'm not sure if the TR-1 has it on it or not. Honestly, I haven't looked at like spreadsheet-worthy stats on all of these guns just yet, um, uh, as well as, you know, of course, really good hip fire. Uh, pretty pretty standard stuff in close quarters carbines, but the, the fast strafe speed is uh, very welcome. And I have the Bandit right now, and you can kind of um, get a feel for that. Hard to compare without another gun, but um, real quickly before I use it, if you um, just you know, kind of use the compare stats tab in uh, in the game itself, and you know mouse over like say the GD7F for instance, you're looking at a considerably slower rate of fire, um, but heavier hitting. Uh, similar bullet velocity, a little bit lower. Similar reload speeds. Um, you know, similar ammo capacity with the addition of, of you know, what you carry in there. Uh, even better hip fire accuracy, though, uh, as well, and aimed accuracy, which is really interesting, honestly, because the GD7F was previously, like, the hip fire monster for NC. So you're looking at, like, you know, SMG levels of hip fire um, with this gun, which is actually really nice. I suppose I can turn off the laser sight. Um, you can remain, you know, quite accurate, uh, depending on how you burst and watch your bloom um, with your hip fire 
well out. To, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it at this range, especially with just the visual recoil that you have to deal with. But that cone of fire remains really tight. Um, and of course, if you're aiming down sights, um, probably feels like like most carbines would. Uh, but the aimed accuracy is actually also quite well. Um, it's interesting. Uh, it's not it's not quite an ACX 11 as far as 200 damage, uh, but but it's a pretty nice. And I guess it's you know in in NC uh, sort of standards that it's 167 damage. But um, uh, I, I'm looking forward to being able to use these in actual uh, gameplay because there's only so much we can do with analyzing stats, uh, looking at spreadsheets, and you know trying it out in VR. Um, so uh, I'm pretty pumped about actually trying them out in the real world, so to speak. Real briefly, comparing it to the other end of the spectrum, the ACX-11, of course you've got faster RPM, uh, less damage, but um, nonetheless still pretty, pretty solid damage, especially for close and medium range. Uh, other similarities there for the most part, better hip fire, worse damage accuracy, but not by much, uh, whereas it has considerably better hip fire. So uh, this is, you know, kind of, on paper at least, my type of gun, and um, I'm interested in hearing uh, what you guys have to say, if you've used it on test or if you've used it so far today since the patch, um, not only the Bandit but the others as well. Um, leave your feedback in the, uh, in the comments below. From uh, what I've gathered so far, uh, most people that I've spoken to are, are pretty happy with the guns. You know, maybe one more than others or, or two more than the other, um, but in general it's uh, pretty well received, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'll, I'll hop over and show the TR and the VS uh, ones as well. Just real briefly. Um, in addition to that, while I'm logging in, the straight pull bolt attachment back from the infill update has finally been added to bolt action sniper rifles. Um, a lot of people were asking for that, myself myself uh, included in that. Um, and uh, well, since I so happen to be an infill here, you can throw one on uh, just to give you an idea. If you're unfamiliar, it allows you to make follow up shots. Basically, as soon as the bolt's ready, that guy disappeared, so it wasn't a good idea, you know. But um, without having to actually unscope and uh, and completely scope back in, which is really nice in my opinion, um, a uh, a feature that I feel should have been in from the uh, from the very beginning and was kind of standard and as far as quality of life among snipers goes. So very happy to see that, even though I don't snipe a lot. Uh, quite a welcome feature. I know it's kind of jumping around, but anyway, where is my friend? The Cougar, okay. I'm gonna throw some standard, um, different attachments, notice, not not a uh, advanced um, laser sight available here, so uh, you may want to consider a regular one or a forward grip. You've got high velocity instead of soft point. You've got your compensator. I'm just gonna throw a typical, like, longer range setup on it at the moment, um, since it's filling that gap a little bit more um, than the NC close quarter, since TR already had the Lynx and the Jaguar. Uh, anyway, comparing it to the Jaguar, for instance, you've got, again, considerably lower RPM, uh, better damage, better velocity, better reload um, for a few less rounds in the mag and in the, in the uh, you know, uh, additional capacity that you can carry with you. Uh, same uh, hip fire accuracy, which is actually quite interesting for a gun that's relatively intended for long range and pretty hard hitting for TR, uh, and really good aimed accuracy. So, um, interesting. Uh, that's kind of the niche that the TR carbines needed to fill, admittedly, with the, the T5 AMC as the only real, like, mid to long range choice that made sense, and it was not a hard hitting weapon. I always said I was looking for um, a gun more along the lines of the ACX 11 or the Pulsar C for TR, and um, I think we found it. Now, with the, uh, with the already decent hip fire, uh, you can totally throw a, um, a laser sight on this. And run this like this, you know. Take the compensator off for the hip fire penalty. Keep the high velocity on. Throw the laser sight on. Run it like kind of like an NS11C, and your hip fire becomes infinitely better, um, even out to like that range or so. It would be fine. So uh, that's that's an option that I'd probably run with. Um, you have the foregrip compensator if you know you're going to be aiming down sights to to have that extra recoil control. But uh, for the most part, I, I wouldn't say you need it really in the favor of hip fire. That's this good. Uh, having a having a TR carbine that hits for 167 um, that you can ADS just fine and uh, be able to use in hip fire range, you know, uh, with with the best of them. So that would probably be my my uh, loadout at first glance. Um, and since I'm in the process of leveling my TR to BR100, uh, this is going to be something I'm going to grab right away and uh, have a lot of fun with, and then be sad when I Araxium it and go back to uh, to lesser. Lesser choices, um, 
or, you know, for lack of a better word. Or at least alternatives that I'm not quite as fond of, because this seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. Running over to the Zenith real quick. Um, we are looking at uh, yet an even different uh, niche that's being filled here. We've got... Where are you? Oh, you're at the bottom. Look at that. All right, we've got a Zenith running... I, I, I'm assuming that this is the full range of attachments it has, and not just um, uh, VR specific, but that's actually quite interesting that it can run advanced foregrip and laser sight. No ammo choices. Um, so you can go laser sight, nothing on the barrel, or forward grip compensator, or some combination thereof, uh, depending on what you're looking to use it for and the strengths of the weapon itself. If you're comparing to, say, a VX67, um, you're looking at a little bit less RPM. Um, I mean, 7080 RPM isn't necessarily a little bit, but you're still at 723, which is higher than, than most. You're at the 143 typical damage, 112 at the min, min range, though, so you've got a little bit more uh, medium range damage drop off in your favor. Velocity is almost identical. Um, reload slightly different, ammo slightly different, um, but all the other stats are like the same as a VX67, so that's quite interesting um, as a potential alternative for close quarters running the advanced laser sight. Um, that would also double up as essentially a better mid-range weapon um, potentially than the VX67 with uh, with better ADS capabilities uh, and so forth. Granted, like I said, I'm not looking at the full range of stats that aren't shown in there, um, such as first shot recoils and um, uh, sway patterns and so on and so forth, which is definitely worth taking into consideration. Uh, if you're looking to make, you know, a, a clear switch over from your previous favorite weapon to to a new carbine, um, but I'm just kind of giving the quick and dirty glance at uh, at it, um, using what what you have available in game. Um, however, I would recommend, you know, analyzing it a little bit further um, if you want to be super serious about it. Nonetheless, uh, all of the ones I've used so far, I just have a good feel about them. Uh, you can kind of mold them into whatever works for you. Man, we went through th went through those bullets quickly. Um, not sure that I would necessarily run advanced forward grip and compensator, but you've still got okay hip fire, right? You still have better hip fire than the Cougar running this setup. Um, so if you absolutely had to, you're still in a better place than most of the uh, most of the other carbines in the game. Um, and your your aiming down sights uh, recoil control should be uh, noticeably better at least. I'm not sure if it's necessary, you might still prefer running the uh, the laser sight, um, especially since the advanced is an option. But uh, you've got this for you if you're looking for um, an alternative to the Pulsar C that isn't quite as slow um, for mid to long range or something along those lines that can still compete uh, quite well in close quarters. If you like the forward grip, you can also take off the compensator since that's much easy for to, easier to compensate for manually and uh, have even better hip fire uh, without having to use the uh, the laser sight. This hip fire is actually quite well. Um, so that's that as far as that goes. Um, I, I think they're a lot of fun um, and uh, you know I, I recommend you guys checking them out in game letting me know what you think and uh, if you tune into the stream over at itsmurder.com I'll certainly be using them in the near future and let you guys know what I think as well. So getting back into the notes we are um, looking at steam chats making people get mad at my quick launch bar anyway um quality of life and balance changes uh, i'm not going to go through all of the the vehicle and infantry weapon changes but i will go through these at least um the lynx carbine for tr has probably gotten the biggest uh rebalancing essentially uh bumping it up to a ridiculous uh, RPM fire rate of 910. I haven't gotten to try it out yet, actually, um, but that's that's, uh, that's that's quite high, especially for a carbine um, compared to you know previous numbers um, with like the Armistice and and so on and so forth, and even the GD7F in the uh, mid to high 800s. Um, but uh, here you are. So try it out. Let me know what you think. Uh, I had previously liked the Jaguar better than the Lynx, but this is uh, quite quite an interesting change uh, as far as close quarters carbines go. Uh, probably helps fill fill a, a better niche compared to the Jaguar though as well. 
Um, so anyway, this is a, a change I'm really happy with. Uh, unintentionally falling short distances will no longer apply jump penalties or force women out, out of iron sights. So when you're strafing over that little bump, uh, a little rock, um, and you, you uh, die to somebody because you get pulled out of your iron sights, um, or you just start to slide down a hill real quick, um, uh, no longer are you going to get pulled out of your iron sights or have the jump penalty of a really awful cone of fire, which is a huge change in my opinion, uh, as little as that may seem. Uh, like an issue uh, whenever it did happen, and it did happen frequently enough to notice uh, it was very frustrating. So very happy about that. AV mana turret projectiles reduced from 10 to 4 and 3 quarter seconds, uh, making the maximum range about 450 meters. Very happy with that as well. I wasn't I wasn't a fan of the invisible uh, AV turret projectiles, which is spoken about somewhere else as well, um, from, you know, forever away, just pelting at you. Uh, this is an interesting change to engineer turret models adjusted to have tighter collision. I'm not sure if that's uh, just kind of movement collision or if it's also hitbox collision. If it's hitbox collision, I'm really happy with that because the AI turret feels like it's been broken forever with <laughs> with how much uh, coverage you have, especially from placing it in a, in a quote-unquote good spot, uh, almost impossible to kill uh, unless you manage to sneak behind the person, conk them, or, you know, whatever. Uh, so anyway, that's interesting. Um, Apparently there was a, a discrepancy in uh, how much you're exposed uh, on NC and VS uh, comparatively to TR AI turrets, um, so that's uh, adjusted as well. Um, TR lockdown, uh, deploy and undeploy faster by a half second in either regard. Uh, Zoe Max, uh, is, yeah, I don't know if we want to call this a buff, but their resistance to small arms fire um, is lowered by 5% instead of 10%, so I mean it is a buff, but I don't know one that's uh, substantial enough to, to be like, hey, Zoe got buffed. Um, Comet damage under Zoe uh, slightly increased, as well as the damage ranges as well. Uh, knife damage, I hesitate to say nerfed, it was simply readjusted from 625 to 500 to uh, account for the fact that Nano Eve is no longer increasing your health, so you still two-shot somebody, but um, that's at a bare minimum. Uh, you, you know, it's like two, two, two knives now do exactly a thousand damage, so if they have any sort of healing or shielding or anything else in between, uh, it's going to not kill the target, and uh, that's something to be mindful of. It also is going to kind of just change that, um, that feeling that you get when you play the game enough and you kind of know that somebody is damaged enough that one knife will kill them. Uh, it's something that a lot of us do in close quarters quite often. We uh, throw a few bullets uh, down their throat and then knife them real quick. Uh, and that might just, you might you might find yourself doing that and uh, what, how'd they survive uh, until you kind of readjust to the uh, to the new value. I understand the change though, you know, I'm not unhappy with it per se, but it's it's going to cause a, a little bit of readjusting, I think. And, uh, you know, recalculating on the fly, if you will. Uh, as far as vehicle changes go, uh, auto repair is now set as 12 seconds uh, before it kicks in across all ranks. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, re reduced uh, depending on how much you start into it. Uh, vehicle night vision, uh, <laughs> slightly buffed, which it definitely needed. Uh, brighter green and longer range. Uh, stealth certification for the Flash has been changed to being four ranks like all other vehicles. Uh, been reset and refunded if you've spent it. Um, I personally re reserted mine at least the first three ranks because they're very inexpensive uh, before I decide what I want to do with the fourth. Uh, mag burner, increased regen rate, uh, especially the lower ranks. Um, and uh, you're looking at, you know, from in the lower ranks, uh, some substantial uh, increase in the amount of seconds required to fully regen from like a whole minute down to 35 seconds at the first rank, uh, whereas the max rank still remains the same at 20. Vanguard shield nerfed uh, quite a bit from 3,000 to 2,000 in the sense of uh, how much is absorbed uh, and the duration has been normalized much like the auto repair uh, to 6 seconds across all ranks. Crawler anchored mode uh, normalized as well to 30% across all ranks. Um, you've got some uh, minor changes in favor of the harasser. Uh, stock, stock armor damage reduction increased from 37 to 39%, um, uh, but most big hitting weapons will still destroy it in the same amount of hits. Uh, same with the infantry small arms resistance from 80 to 82%, uh, placing the resistance uh, type 50% of the way back towards what it was pre-nerf. Um, this is a pretty cool change, though, the Harasser Turbo, and they were talking about this on the uh, the FNO panel with Rack and them, um, about the, uh, the, the the Harasser Turbo um, not only being buffed uh, to consume 50% less fuel while active, allowing for a 
uh, a longer boost basically bringing back to pre-nerf values um, as far as the consumption goes at least uh, but it's also passive and standard on all harassers you have to still cert it and uh, it has a cert line uh, kind of like the the AMS cert for senders uh, but you can get other things um, in that slot now which is pretty cool and uh, I'm, I'm quite a fan for that of that I want to want to see harassers make a little bit of a comeback at least uh, moving along you have a ton of vehicle and infantry weapon balancing and uh, this video would be absurdly long it, it's kind of already getting there uh, so I'm not going to really go through it um, uh, and of course there will be a link to the patch notes in the vi in the video below for you to check it out yourself um, but the gist of it I guess basilisks um, toned down a little bit for longer range and like I said you can read through all the specifics if you like uh, cobalt buffed uh, a bit um, to make it a little bit more effective against light armor um, and uh, you know, have a better alternative than to simply just being good at sniping infantry at long ranges. Um, the canister previously enforced or modified um, using, um, some, made some improvements in uh, both anti-light armor and uh, anti-infantry roles. Uh, Saron too effective against infantry, um, so toned down as a result in the blast damage uh, requirements and so forth, or uh, rather uh, numbers, damage numbers. Uh, the enforcer, the actual enforcer, the rocket launcher, um, too strong in anti-tank yeah, anti categories, can't speak at all, um, bringing it more in line with, with uh, the halberd uh, with these changes. Vulcan, uh, slight increase, uh, or rather just one change to uh, conifier sight range from 75 to 100 meters, uh, causing it to miss less shots at that range. Uh, Ranger <laughs> needs to perform a little better, for sure, um, so a buff in that regard. Uh, our nerf to our to our Viper Lightning surprise uh, not surprised um, there of course uh, just joking um, but um, nonetheless it is what it is uh, direct hit damage reduced um, blast damage reduced uh, pretty much just a flat nerf not a huge nerf per se but a flat nerf uh, the big nerf here being no longer one hitting infantry uh, on a direct hit so is it worth still using maybe especially if you like it. Um, I don't I don't run lightnings a lot, but I've I've been running it exclusively whenever I do, so I might have to change it up, try out the heat again, or so on and so forth. Uh, similar with the the prowler heat and he, uh, the double barrel is too strong against infantry, um, and they uh, made some changes to bring it more in line uh, with the alternative. Um, a cone of fire buff to the new liberator spur, um, and as well as a cone of fire buff to the duster. Uh, the Airhammer, Banshee, and Shredder have uh, bullet impact effects uh, to go along with the fact that they are explosive rounds uh, that have been updated. Uh, that's that's not um, an actual change, more th more so than just cosmetic. Um, and uh, a buff to the Needler, essentially. Um, slight buffs in, in all of these categories. Uh, the Fury, uh, increased ammo resupply rate on all variants by different amounts, but on all variants that's something that, that it really needed. Uh, it took forever to resupply uh, Fury Ammo, so I'm glad that that uh, was part of this change. And then all of the infantry weapon tuning. Uh, again, um, not going to go through all of this, but you're looking at a lot of carbines, a lot of assault rifles, actually. I, I shouldn't say a lot, but you're looking at carbines, assault rifles, uh, LMGs, SMGs, and some pistols, even the jackhammers in here, um, just depending on the Empire. Uh, the Carnage AR, the GD7F, the GD22S, Saw S, EM6, EM1, Cyclone, Rebel, and Jackhammer for NC. Um, and most of the changes I say are, are either slight adjustments to reload speed, slight adjustments to bullet velocity, or slight adjustments to recoil. I'm pretty sure that covers everything. Uh, but if you use one of these guns, um, or even if you don't and you're just looking for something new to use, uh, I would take a look. For the most part, they're minor adjustments, especially kind of just fitting you know more of a niche for that weapon uh with the new with the new carbines coming out and so on and so forth um but take a look nonetheless uh for tr you're looking at the trv the saber uh the burst cycler the s cycler the tar the t5 burst the t5s the jaguar uh the links which we talked about uh, above which got the, probably the most substantial overhaul of an existing infantry weapon the carve s the bull the armistice the hailstorm the mcg um and the striker I will mention the MCG because it got a ballistic rapid refire toggle attachment, um, which overclocks the MCG's motor, uh, allowing it to spin up faster and increases its rate of fire. So that's that's something uh, more so than just some minor adjustments to to the usual values. Um, that's worth noting for what it's worth. I haven't personally used it, so let me know what you think if you have. 
for VS, you're looking at HV45, CME, Corvus, Serpent, Orion, SV88, Ursa, Eridani, and Cerberus. Um, I'm just kind of rattling off the names in case you want to, you know, take a look at a specific gun. Um, and we're down here to Coromed Labs. I had I had hoped to have a uh, a observer cam for this part uh, in particular, um, but I don't have it quite set up yet. However, uh, RadarX is a cool dude, and uh, and I want to thank him in advance for for working on setting that up. And hopefully, we'll have it set up in advance of the next video so that I can use it uh, kind of on demand when need be uh, for these types of things. Um, nonetheless, Coromed was was one of my least favorite bases to defend. Uh, or even just fight at in general on Endar at this point in time. Um, and they made some pretty considerable changes to it. Um, not quite Quartz Ridge-like changes, but uh, the base was definitely redone, as well as the area in between it and Endar X and so forth, uh, to just make it a bit more enjoyable uh, fighting in that area. Uh, and I got to actually play there for all of a minute and a half earlier, and I could definitely already tell um, that the changes were for the better from what it looked like. So good news there. If you fought there, let me know what you think about it. Uh, here, like we were talking about from the previous patch, uh, more updates to reverse as far as cosmetics go, uh, fixes to bugs, um, defense missions created if uh, significant vulnerability or significant uh, enemy population in a, in a vulnerable facility. Um, this, this is actually pretty important. We were running into this issue even during Community Clash uh, last week. Capture status for the current facility uh, should show um, regardless of if that's your mission or not. Uh, previously you could be defending a base, you wouldn't know what how long was on the cap, if you owned it, if the enemy owned it, uh, if your mission was at a different base, and that was really frustrating, especially for a competitive play, so I'm glad to see that getting changed or fixed. Uh, more fixes to, to client end zone crashes, um, some basic, uh, lots of art fixes, things that were floating, things that were missing, uh, and so on and so forth. I know we found a few of those on stream the other day, um, that's good to hear decals correctly displaying on harasser Dalton and Zephyr having different sound effects um, uh, other really basic kind of just bug fixes and so on and so forth infantry should no longer be able to move vehicles by jumping from underneath them um, brings me back to planet side one a little bit um, and uh, and that's about it so that's where we're at guys um, I know the video is still pretty long but it was really lengthy patch notes uh, and I didn't even get to read close to every single line, so be sure you check it out yourself. Check out the link in the description below. Let me know what you think. It's a pretty cool patch. I like when there's this much content uh, at once, uh, even if it means skipping a week of patches. Um, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be checking out. And don't forget WXP this weekend if you're watching this um, April 18th to 20th for Easter weekend. I'll be playing as much as I can, uh, even though I know I'll be working uh, those days for events at work. I'm gonna be playing as much as I can, getting that WXP, trying out the new carbines, uh, and I'll be streaming it. Uh, all over at itsmurda.com, so I hope to see you guys there. Thanks so much. Uh, be sure to tune into Command Center uh, if you again if you're watching this before before Thursday afternoon at 4 p.m. Pacific, because uh, that is happening and it's an awesome show. You don't want to miss it. I'll be in the chat uh, as long as I'm home. <laughs> anyway, have a good night, guys. Take care. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. I'll see you on the stream.